In this video, I'm going to share with you three books that if you study and apply at a high level in 2023, you're going to have a totally different life. You're going to achieve massive success, massive results. Everything will look different. Even in a few months, everything will look different. Now, some of these books you've probably heard of. Some of them, again, there's only three of them. Some of them are very famous. Others you might not have heard of, but I want you to study these books. There's a difference between reading a lot of stuff, consuming a lot of information, and truly absorbing, applying, understanding concepts. If you take these three books and truly study them, I'm talking study deeply, maybe listen to or read each of these books four or five times throughout the year. That's where true learning comes. You're better off reading one book 10 times if it's a great book than 10 books one time that you don't even remember anything you learned. So book number one, as no surprise, is actually Think and Grow Rich. I know what you're thinking. You've heard of this book. You've probably even read it. You read it five, 10 years ago. I've read it 10 or more times, but I actually started listening to that book while I was at the gym this morning. And I was re-reminded why this book has stood the test of time. This book has been around for 80 or more years, sold 50 million plus copies, it has a different energy about it. I've heard lots of mixed stories about Napoleon Hill as a character. I'm talking about the book itself. This book has a lot of really powerful concepts that have been kind of regurgitated in a lot of different forms over the decades. But this book says it in such a direct way that if you listen to it, it does change you. Even just today, by listening to that book this morning, I approached something very differently than had I not been listening to that book. So in the beginning of Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill tells the story of a guy named Edwin Barnes. Edwin Barnes was essentially a nobody. And this was back in like the 1920s, I believe, when Thomas Edison was all the rage. He was like the most famous inventor. And Edwin Barnes made it a commitment that he would find a way to go into business with Thomas Edison. That was his commitment. And he became definite about it. And one of the things that Napoleon Hill talks about in that book is obviously, first off, having a vision for your future self, having a vision of what you want. Edwin Barnes wanted to work with Thomas Edison. It doesn't matter how seemingly impossible it is. And I'm going to go in the second book in a second, which is a really cool application of this principle. But think about something that would be seemingly impossible, but would be very exciting and amazing if you could have it. From a psychology standpoint, there's a concept called hope and pathways thinking that if you're highly committed, when the why is strong enough, you will find the how. Psychologists call that pathways thinking. There is a pathway. If you're focused on something from a psychology standpoint, again, the concept is selective attention. Whatever you focus on expands. Whatever you focus on, you master. Whatever you focus on, you create more of. He had a very specific target. He wanted to go into business with Thomas Edison. And of course, he got rejected many times and it seemed like an impossible foot, but he eventually found the way. I think he even started by like being the janitor. He found some way in, some third door. And if you're, if when the why is strong enough, you'll find the how. Or as that statement goes, when you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. Once you get committed, then providence moves too. Nothing really happens until after you're fully committed. Once you're fully committed, then you're willing to act courageously. Actually, the moment of courage, which is proactive approach-oriented behavior towards your goals, Courage is actually the embodiment of full commitment, where you're willing to take on the risks. And once you start acting courageously and powerfully towards your future self in a approach-oriented way, first off, you have a lot more flow because research on flow says that in order to be in a flow state, you've got to have clear goals, a clear objective. You've got to actually be taking on some form of risk or immediate consequence. Like there's, there's chances of failure and consequences and risk. These things heighten your performance. They heighten your ability to perform. By the way, I've applied this like on a very high level. I remember when I wanted to write books with Dan Sullivan. Uh, this is actually our third book together. 10X is easier than 2X. This is the galley version. The hardcover comes out in May. But I remember being very clear back in 2015, I think, that I wanted to write books with Dan Sullivan, who's the number one entrepreneurial coach in the world. I was actually studying entrepreneurial courage for my master's research at Clemson University. And I really wanted to write books with Dan Sullivan. And it wasn't that hard. I've now written three books with him. But you can also visualize in any way your future self. And so this book, basically the, the core idea here is this. It's very simple for Think and Grow Rich. Imagine what you want. No one can tell you what you want. You have to decide what you want, what you value, what you care about. And it does not matter how seemingly impossible it is. Then you continuously feed that thought with prayer, with visualization, 
with journaling and evening and morning visualization would be super key. As Thomas Edison said, never go to bed without a request to your subconscious. And so if you want to think and achieve goals and transform your subconscious and transform your selective attention, transform your worldview, you've got to take your evening and mornings very seriously where you stop randomly scrolling. You've got to eliminate a lot of the immediate information that's low level, that's actually continually muddling your worldview. Signal versus noise. You want to remove the noise. And from the 80-20 perspective, 80% of everything going on in the world or in your world is noise. 80% of everything in your life right now is creating almost none of your results. And so you want to eliminate at least 80% of the information you're consuming and 80% of the activities you're doing and focus on the 20% and go all in on that and make that your 10x future self. And that 20% is that which you most want, that which gives you the most sense of purpose, excitement, meaning. Viktor Frankl in the book, Man's Search for Meaning, talks a lot about how what we need, what man needs is not a tensionless state, but rather the striving and struggling for a worthwhile goal. So you visualize it, you accept it, you assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, you eliminate all else that's low level that's keeping you distracted, and you then develop what Napoleon Hill would call definiteness of purpose purpose. And this is where he goes back to Edwin Barnes. What Edwin Barnes was definite. He was fully committed to working with Thomas Edison. It didn't matter how many no's he got, he was eventually going to get his yes. And this is something that is really important for you to think about. For example, if you're a salesperson and you're trying to get a sale, it doesn't matter how many times the person has said no, you just got to get the yes. right? And so having a definiteness of purpose, having what he would call like ultimate faith, faith that comes through prayer. And that level of faith is ultimately committed, courageous, definite action, which creates incredible results. It's having a result orientation, having faith and commitment and being willing to find and achieve the way. So how that hit me today was I was listening to it and I realized there was a lot of people in a given situation that I'm in that I was becoming comfortable with them just saying no to me. But I thought if I was definite about this, how would I approach it? And so that led me to taking more bold, committed, extreme action and to be a lot more definite and a lot more open to what would, what would be required. Once you're in an orientation and in a mindset of definiteness of purpose, definiteness of commitment, where you're like, I'm going to find a way to do this. That's why they say necessity is the mother of invention. When you're in that space, that mindset of commitment, you're a lot more receptive to inspiration. You're a lot more receptive to faith. You're willing to do whatever's in, involved in the powers of heaven can come down, but also you're just a lot more innovative in what you're willing to do. You will find the way. So Think and Grow Rich is a really interesting book. It, it's a controversial book. There's, there's certainly better books out there, but this is a book to study. And it's going to take me to book two. But I just, I challenge you to genuinely just go back through that book, whether you're a person of science, a person of faith, it really doesn't matter. In my opinion, just read the book. The book trains you to think in terms of impossible goals, and it trains you to become definite, definite in your purpose about what you want, which is exactly what Viktor Frankl would teach you to do. Viktor Frankl, who wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning, in a very different way, taught the same principle. He said that when the why is strong enough, you can bear almost any how. And from Frankl's perspective, it was about survival. Frankl was in the concentration camps, and he said that the person who lost faith in their future was doomed. They began to physically and mentally decay. So from Frankl's standpoint, you need a clear, committed purpose and goal, not only to function in the present, but to thrive and to survive and to overcome anything, whereas Napoleon Hill was saying, imagine any seemingly impossible goal, be definite about it. And it doesn't matter how many no's you get, if you're definite about it, you can eventually get your yes. And you can get pretty much anything you want if you're willing to make that who you are. Think about it, create it, become that person. And a similar book on the topic would be As a Man Thinketh, that whatever you think about regularly is what you ultimately create and what you ultimately become. So that takes me now to book two. Book two is a great book that I'd never heard of until about three months ago. The book is called Go For No. And I've talked about this a little bit on this channel, but it fits really beautifully with Think and Grow Rich. So the full title of the book is Go for No. Yes is the destination, but no is how you get there. And so if you combine the two concepts, with Think and Grow Rich, the invitation for you is to think about something you truly want, which seems impossible, which it really doesn't matter how impossible it is. Because if you think about it enough, whatever you focus on expands, but also whatever you're focused on, you become more of. A term for that is called fitness function, that we all have a future 
that we're optimizing ourselves for. A lot of people, they're not really very proactive or imaginative about that future. They're mostly just spinning their wheels and becoming more and more of their present self. But if you're hyper-specific about what you want, very specific about what you want, and I'm talking like, as an example, my son, Caleb, wants to be a college tennis player, but it's not just any college. He wants to go to a specific college. And so there's specific standards and requirements to go to that college, right? And so his training process would be different as if he was going to a different college. There's a developmental path and there's specific requirements, et cetera. That's what fitness function is all about is what is the specific standards and the developmental path to achieving those standards and becoming that kind of person. So you get to decide who do you want to be? Who's your future self? Be hyper-specific about it. Don't be broad about it. Hyper-specific. And then going now to book two, go for no which means that you are on what what psychologists would call an approach orientation where you're willing to fail your way to success. This is a big aspect of what Carol Dweck would call a growth mindset. Carol Dweck, she's the researcher who split growth mindset from fixed mindset. And she found that one of the fundamental differences between these two mindsets is, is that growth mindset people embrace failure. They embrace past failures, current failures, and they're willing to fail in the future because they're not worried about being right. If you're trying to be right, then you're avoiding failure. You also have what they would call a fragile identity where any form of failure shatters your self-image because you're overly defined by where you're at right now. Whereas if you have a growth mindset, you're more interested in learning. So one of the things that Carol Dweck talks about in that book, and this is something that my wife and I have been applying, is at the end of the day, we ask our kids, in what ways did you fail today? And, and what did you learn? Because failing, if you're if you're someone who's striving for things that you've never done before, you should be failing a lot. And I love the quote actually from Seth Godin. He said, if I fail more than you, I win. Because if you're, if you have the ability to fail, that means that you're still in the game. That means you can, you can keep learning. And if you're, if you're avoiding failure, then you're not going to learn enough. You're not going to learn at the speed required to get very good at what you do. Going for no is a powerful concept. And one question I would have for you is, What's the size of the rejections you've been getting lately? Have you been getting rejected at the level of your future self? In the book, The Art of Learning, Josh Waitzkin has a concept he calls investment in loss or investment in failure. And basically, Josh was a like a Tai Chi student. And what he found is, is that when they were doing like their training and stuff and there was open training, what would happen was is, is that the students would always pair themselves with people who were around their same skill level or even a little lower than their skill level because people like to win. <laughs> but winning is not where the most aggressive learning is. And so Josh was the opposite. He would always pair himself with people like four or five skills, skill levels above him. And he called that investing in loss or investing in failure. And he would get the crap kicked out of him in those trainings. But his brain was forced to adapt much quicker. We all have what's called mirror neurons in our heads. And so like, you know, even though he was getting thrown around in terms of Tai Chi, he was learning how to adapt. When you're first starting to learn something new, it's it's like a bunch of new information at you, but eventually you assimilate it and you develop what psychologists call automaticity, where time slows down and you can actually see it. It's kind of like when you first start driving. When you first start driving, it can be overwhelming because there's so much stimulus and you don't really understand it. But as you train and develop in that area and even overdevelop, uh, you start to kind of just be able to drive and time slows down and you can do it unconsciously. That's what automaticity is all about. So training and, and and investing in loss and failing at the level of your future self is how you become your future self. And it's how you learn at the level of your future self. And so going for no is a really powerful principle. And you could ask yourself how much, how big are the, are the rejections you're now getting? How big are the failures you're now having? And what are you learning from those? And are you able to eventually turn those no's into yeses? Do you have a definiteness of purpose? I, I also love the concept as it relates to this. And this is something that Greg McEwen talks about in essentialism. He calls it monk mode, going into monk mode. And the main idea here is hyper focus on a singular goal, kind of like a keystone goal. In the book, The Power of Habit, he talks about keystone habits, which are one habit that essentially unlock lots of other positive habits. Well, a keystone goal is one objective that if achieved, unlocks everything else that you want. And so think about in a really imaginative, impossible-based way, What and, and I love what Tim Ferriss says, by the way. He says that impossible goals are easier than possible ones. Number one, they're first off way more motivating. There's way less competition because 99% of people are going for small goals. This is discussed a lot by David Schwartz in The Power of Thinking Big or The Magic of Thinking Big. But if you have big goals and you're not afraid of failing, if you have a growth mindset, and if you're willing to get rejected over and over and over at the level of no, eventually you'll learn at that level 
eventually you'll learn at that level and eventually you start to get yeses because whatever you focus on, you expand. This goes back to fitness function that eventually you can develop the skills, the capabilities at that level of your future self. Eventually things slow down, just like learning how to drive, learning how to speak a language. You can learn anything if you're willing to continue learning how to walk, right? You've got to invest in failure. The little children have to fall over and over and over again. And as people grow, as they age, they stop being willing to fail. They stop being willing to invest in law, stop being willing to go for no. So if you combine these two books, and then I'll go into the last one really briefly, Think and Grow Rich, which is just a training program on inviting you to get definite about what you ultimately want and not putting limits on that, and then training your mindset, your faith, your decision ability, your pathways thinking to ultimately get there, you combine that with go for a no, which is a very courageous commitment-based approach-oriented way of failing at the level of your future self, of being proactive. Be proactive. I mean, how many people are truly proactive? Going for no at the level of your future self, seeking opportunities, getting rejected, and being definite and eventually turning the no into your yes. These are two phenomenal books. The last book I'll mention is Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb. This comes at it from a very different way. Nassim Taleb is more of an academic philosopher, very intense thinker, but I will say that there's a few things in this book that are phenomenal. One of them is just the core idea that basically there are things which are fragile, which can break. Essentially a fragile identity is something that can break, but also like this can break, like it's a glass jar, right? So things there's things that are fragile and the longer period of time there is, the things which are fragile break. Whereas things which are resilient, they can handle stress. They can handle volatility. They can handle stress, volatility in the market, volatility emotionally, volatility in situations. Things which are resilient can handle stress. They're not fragile but they're not the opposite of fragile. There's things which are stronger than resilience. And this is what he talks about as anti-fragile. These are things which actually get better with volatility, better with stress, better with trauma. And this is where all the research on post-traumatic growth is. But there's a few quick applications I'll just give you. One of the things he talks about is that it's actually more anti-fragile to remove things from your life that you know are fragile than to add things which may cause benefits. He calls this via negativa, but it fits with the 80-20 principle that if you want to apply the 80-20 principle, the first thing you do is not focus on the 20%. The first thing you do is actually you eliminate the 80%. So if you had a to-do list of 10 items, rather than focusing on two of them, you actually start by eliminating eight of them that you know are not the most powerful. So one of the things that Nassim Taleb talks about in Anti-Fragile is with a long enough time period, almost everything will break down. And so your goal, if you want to optimize for your future self and make your future self more anti-fragile is remove everything in your life that you already know is fragile. Remove everything in your life that you know in the future is going to, you're going to have to pay the piper. Like for example, if you have a smoking habit, as an example, like that's fragile, that's, that's going to cost your future self big. And so if you can remove that, then you, you just became more anti-fragile. If you can remove things from your life, remove low-level media or certain people, this is about raising your floor and about creating a very powerful high-level floor and in becoming increasingly anti-fragile in the present and in the future. One of the things he talks about, and this will be the last thought on this, is that time is always on the side of the anti-fragile. So if you can be patient, yes, you want to be proactive. You want to go for no. Um, you There's a great, you know, it's it goes back to thinking fast and slow. You want to actually have both paradoxes, but if you have time on your side, then you're very anti-fragile and you don't need to be desperate. And so these are three books that if you study, if you master in 2023, you can go very far. They're very powerful books. Think and Go Rich, Go For No, Anti-Fragile. Obviously there's thousands of books you can study. There's dozens and dozens of books I'm going to study and read in 2023. But if you read these three, Wow, you can achieve a lot. Wow, you can start to think differently about your future self and get very definite, very committed and have a lot more faith and power. And then if you're willing to go for no, in a world where most people are either busy on the hamster wheel or distracted or too afraid to get rejected, if you're willing to be hyper approach oriented and go for no and fail at the level of your future self with a growth mindset, wow, you can learn a fast and you can create opportunities that would never be there for other people. And then becoming increasingly anti-fragile, where you remove everything fragile from your life, you raise your floor on all things. As one example, uh, I had a very fragile situation 
with my accountant. I've just had bad accountant relationships and it's led to bad tax situations. And so part of being anti-fragile is removing everything from your life that is fragile for your current self and your future self. And so I've raised my floor. In other words, raised my standard and have an amazing accountant that I'm going to work with much better in 2023, already working better for in 2022. And so it's about removing everything in your life that is fragile to your current and future self, bad habits, eating, people, situations, systems just removing everything that's fragile and becoming increasingly anti-fragile, having an increasingly stable, powerful floor, which then allows you to take big risks, to go for no in a big way. Hope that helps. My name is Dr. Benjamin Hardy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it. Please subscribe. Have an amazing 2023. Talk to you later.